Hey everybody. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about sound banks. What is a sound bank? Well, a sound bank is a package of files and audio that Unity or whatever game engine that you're using loads to play audio. So it's kind of, uh, it's the wise file format that the game actually reads so that it can play music in your game. The last session we were exploring the Soundcaster. So we're gonna close that. Again, we wanna be in the designer layout here and we wanna make sure that we have our events set up and our events should be playing in the Soundcaster. If they're not, go back to the previous tutorial and go through that. All right, there is a sound banks tab here where we'll create a new sound bank, uh, but it's more efficient if we go into the layouts menu and choose our brand new layout sound bank so sound bank layout and this layout kind of defines our sound banks and it also down here in the lower left you'll see that it has our events that we've created you remember the events that we created in the event tab here yes those are actually in the event viewer which is kind of nice we can be in sound banks here and we can create a new sound bank so if we right click on the default work unit, new child, sound bank. This allows us to create our first sound bank. Remember, this is the package that the game will load to actually play the music from our project. Now, really big games have multiple sound banks, one for level one, one for level two. Uh, in our game, we just kind of have one. So we might want to call it level one sound bank. And if we actually look here now in our sound banks, we'll see it here too. You can create it here as well. You, um, I think you can. Maybe you have to create it over here. I wonder if you right click. Yeah, it doesn't give you an option to create a new one here. You have to do it in the sound banks tab here. Whenever you see an asterisk, by the way, either in the default work unit or at the top of your screen, it means that you haven't saved your project and if you hit Command S on a Mac or Control S on a PC, then it will get rid of that asterisk. So that's kind of a way of knowing. Now, the sound bank right now doesn't contain anything in it. When I select it, you'll see down here, it doesn't have anything in the sound bank. So we want to add all our objects. So I'll select all our events that we've created and then drag them either here or I could drag them here to the sound bank. I'm going to drag them up to the sound bank and then you can see that it's added those into the sound bank itself. Okay, so I'm going to hit save here. So these events, when I load this sound bank, will be available in our, our Unity or Unreal project once I generate them. But I still have to generate them. I've only kind of set it up. To generate them, I select it. And then I choose what platforms, Mac and Windows and English. Now, let's say you don't have Mac here. It's generally a good idea. It defaults with Windows, but maybe you need the Mac. So what I'm gonna do next is add a platform. If you go to the project menu, you can actually go to platform manager, it's about midway down. And that allows you to add additional platforms. So if I hit add here, I can add other platforms like Android. Some of them, so Android is free, iOS is free in terms of these small projects under 200 assets. But I believe that PlayStation and Xbox One uh, and Switch all require additional licenses, which uh, you'll need to get from PlayStation or Nintendo or from from Wise to get them to actually import. So I don't think, uh, so some of these are available like Android and iOS are, are kind of free to add, but some of them you'll need a special license. And then you hit okay, uh, and then you, it would reopen the project. Since we're, I already have Mac and Windows, I don't need to go through that process here. Uh, it hasn't actually generated these sound banks yet, but that's kind of what I'm gonna do next is generate the sound banks. So if I hit generate here, 
generate checked or generate all, what it's going to do is it's going to start building the sound bank, that single sound bank I had. And it typically has this log here which tells you what's happening. Occasionally you'll see errors. Some of the errors are benign and some of them you'll need to fix. Uh, check with your instructor if you get er errors. Uh, it also tells me what my data size is. And my data size right now is 33 megabytes and it has a decoded side of three. So essentially that means that I'm not doing any type of compression at all, which means that my bank is pretty big. Uh, and we'll get into how to compress your banks in a future session. Uh, so we'll definitely review that. For right now, we're just gonna use the uncompressed ones to build our sound banks because uh, we, we don't need to compress it really small at this point. So again, just to review, we are in a special layout called sound bank. And the sound bank layout allows us to create new sound banks if we want. And I've created that one here. When you create a sound bank, you have to attach events to that sound bank. So I've dragged in these events to the sound bank and you can see what's in the sound bank down here. Later on, you can actually edit. You can right click and delete something if you don't need it. You also can look at the details and edit actually what's in it. So what it's doing is collating uh, everything in these events and it knows to kind of put all the different stuff that we built in the hierarchy and build uh, include all these WAV files that we have. So it's kind of automatically doing all those things based on the events that you've added into the sound bank itself. And that's it for this tutorial. Again, once you've generated, then we can actually start importing it into the game for a future assignment a little bit later in the class.